Yes. The, um, the Williamsport uh, Guardian, uh, in their current issue, has a list of all the contributions that the oil and gas companies are making to legislators and candidates in the current election. And it leads to a three-part question if you feel uh, competent to discuss this area. The first question is, is it true that Pennsylvania is the only state that does not tax this type of extraction of a non-renewable source resource for the benefit of its uh, citizens, especially given the problems that will develop over the next 50 years uh, that you've already indicated. The second is... I think the answer to that is yes. So that's an easy one. Okay. It's the only large petroleum right. producing state that doesn't, that doesn't. have okay. a sense. Then the second question is, what, if you know this, uh, in comparison with other states, what would you consider to be a fair or an average tax that Pennsylvania uh, should be charging uh, for this extraction? Ooh. And thirdly, if you <laughs> have an opinion, what what do you think is the likelihood that Pennsylvania's legislature uh, will pass some sort of time? Well, I answer all the easy questions, so Tom's going to answer <laughs> You didn't answer the first one, though. Oh, yeah, that's true. Good questions. Uh, and certainly, you know, those that are engaged in the conversation right now know that that's a very, very hot conversation going on in Harrisburg. So the answer to the first one, as we indicated, the answer is yes. As we're aware, uh, Pennsylvania is the uh, the only large producing uh, gas producing state out there right now that does not have a severance tax, specifically a severance tax. The second one was the um, fair. Uh, the uh, the fair amount. What what would that uh, be? You know, that's not a place that that's one. Of the, you're shaking your head already. You pretty much knew that I would say that. That's not <laughs> a place, and I think the laughter indicated that as well. That's not a place. That's a very political question, and that's not a place for us to to necessarily. Uh, have an answer for that, but I will answer the third one, but just to touch on the second one for just a moment One of the things we have done and that we're involved in some of that uh, dialogue and research as well Is finding out well, what are the other ones out there? So those that are making those decisions in Harrisburg because it's a statewide decision have that information and they can see on a uh, a quick and easy comparison what that actually looks like they're using that data right now but that decision still comes down to a political decision in Harrisburg and not one that uh, Mike and I seem to be able to uh, have any impact on but let but, can I make sure. one comment yes. which will probably get me in trouble no I'm just gonna say that um, if you look at the economics of this the um, house proposed 39 cents per thousand cubic feet and if you, uh, just for comparison, and I won't make any um, statements, evaluative statements, but the price of natural gas right now is in the $3.90 range per thousand cubic feet. So that represents 10% of what, right off the top of what a company would produce. Um, a lot of companies, you can go on the web, uh, Chesapeake has investor, uh, range has investor uh, documents, and they try to indicate what it costs them to produce that thousand cubic feet of gas. And when gas gets down to about 350 without the severance tax in Pennsylvania, if that happens, um, it's going to be marginal for them because of the co very high costs of doing these lateral wells. Right now they're doing well, but so without any evaluation, I'll just give you that comparison. And one thing I'll add in before I answer the third question, because I think it ties in with what Mike is saying, if you look at the different shale plays across the country, Marcellus is actually one of the cheapest to produce. And one of the, there's a variety of reasons why that's the case. But the economics are very favorable with Marcellus because you have a huge resource right on top of the marketplace. So you don't have to ship it in by pipeline, and build pipeline, and build capacity from Texas. The two of them are right next to each other. This is the largest commercial gas market in the world, not just the country, but in the world, the northeastern, north central part of the United States. Big resource right next to the market, very favorable economics. So proximity or location, location, location is certainly a big part of that. And the third question was about the, uh, the, the reality of it being passed. That's, am I pretty close? Yeah. Okay, whether it will be passed. Um, right now, we're following that very closely. And right now, there's a lot of indications that it will not get passed in the session that's going on. 
uh, something in the paper about it. And again, you know, we have people down there looking at that and watching that and feeding us information. It does not look likely by our read at this moment in time, and obviously, you know, politics change pretty rapidly down there, it does not look likely that that's going to pass in this session. Now, with that said, if you look ahead, what's the likelihood that there's going to be a gas tax, which if I can go a little further and suggest you, you're thinking about, uh, the likelihood of a gas tax in Pennsylvania, I think, is inevitable. 